Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. In January, it will be an anniversary of Robert Stone's death. And I got a chance recently to meet in person Robert Stone's son. And I heard all about his writing style and the way that he wrote. It was very interesting. He said that Robert Stone had a very particular schedule and he would write by hand every day for a certain given amount every day. And he wrote like 80 books. We've gotten the wonderful opportunity to read many of these teachings. And this is another one I wanted to read from Life Without Limits called The Amazing Power of Positive Imaging. Robert Stone's very good at giving specific techniques that you can use and are quite different than many of the more generic techniques that you might hear. The Amazing Power of Positive Imaging. Greek naturalists, getting their inspiration from the beauty of Greek woods and streams, extrapolated natural characteristics into human life. Nature was at the core of their architecture and at the core of their democracy. Nature's ways were synchronized with mathematics by Pythagoras as far back as the 6th century. Nature's ways were reconciled with the art of successful living by Plato. Nature's ways became the ways of the gods by Greek religionists. The key to this extrapolation of nature to such seemingly diverse areas as mathematics and religion was with the use of mental imagery. Socrates claimed that seeing with the eyes was far less reliable than seeing with the mind. Plato saw less of a future for humankind in the pursuit of human pleasures than in the pursuit of the Creator's pleasures, making this a better world to live in. In Athens, his appeal was, You, my friend, a citizen of the great and mighty and wise city of Athens, are you not ashamed of heaping up the greatest amount of money and honor and reputation and caring so little about the wisdom and truth and the greatest improvement of the soul which you never regard or heed at all? His lesson to the Greeks and later to the world was that nature's wealth, a product of the Creator, far exceeds our cash. His concept of society was one of human perfection through the application in life of vision. Panopolis lived in Athens, Greece, in the early days of the 4th century BC. This was a time of transition, and the great city-states were losing their importance. To Panopolis, this was a time of promising transition when people with imagination could influence changes with limitless possibilities. Though a city dweller, Panopolis spent much of his time in nearby wooded hills observing nature. This was one of the reasons why he became a member of Plato's circle of intellectuals. He probably played no small part in supporting Plato's concept of individuals seeking perfection through vision. Seeing with the mind yields insight. The Greeks discovered that obtaining fundamental insights was not the monopoly of geniuses, but actually a skill that could be learned and developed. Their people looked forward to participating in the state meetings where ideas were expressed towards solving society's problems. Many took time out in advance to meditate about the contributions that they might be able to make at these meetings. What they then expressed at these meetings was the stuff of geniuses, inspired solutions. Taking time out to be quiet and search for answers is really not time out, but rather time in, consciously or not. You are turning off the outside world and turning on an inner world. This inner world is the source of vision, inspiration, and insight. Why? Because it is your window on infinite intelligence. We call the spiritual world of the Creator the creative realm. We use tuning in as a way of tapping that realm. Are we trespassing? Do we of the physical realm have a right to venture mentally into the spiritual realm? The measuring stick that we have available to gauge right or wrong is our conscience. How do we feel about going to the spiritual realm within? Why not do it now and see how you feel about it? Read these instructions twice. Exercise to enter the spiritual realm. 1. Sit in a comfortable chair. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths. 2. Imagine your higher self in front of you, bathed in light. 
Three, say I love you. Four, be aware of how you feel. Five, open your eyes saying mentally wide awake. Put the book down and do it. How did you feel while being in the spiritual realm within? I felt insulated against stress. It felt closer to God. It was a feeling of being free. There is a peace within that is hard to describe. I felt I could overcome all limitations. These are some of the responses received to that question, says the Daily Word. I am as free and expansive in my thinking and actions as I allow myself to be. It appears to be unanimous. The feeling was good. By going within to the spiritual realm, you are not trespassing, in fact. The feeling is so good, good for your health, well-being, peace, and intelligence, that it is quite likely one is remiss by not going within. Objective and subjective uses of the inner world. Half the world goes within daily. Most of these are people who do so because it is a part of their religious practices to meditate. These include Buddhists, Taoists, and Christians. Not all in these religions meditate. But if you are one who does not go within periodically, a great reward awaits you when you begin to do so. You can enjoy a better life if you periodically go within. This is true in two ways. You can function subjectively or objectively. In either way, the rewards are bountiful. Let us examine these two approaches. First, the subjective approach to going within. This is the approach where you go within just to be there. This is called passive meditation. It is the most common use of meditation. A few minutes just being in the spiritual realm is a restorative tonic. It's like going to an energy bank and making a withdrawal. When you find your meditation, you feel enriched in many ways. Then there is the objective approach to going within. This is the approach where you go within to do something while you are there, to either pray or use your imaging ability to see some problem solved. This is called dynamic meditation. I was invited by the Theosophical Society to introduce dynamic meditation in their headquarters at Adyar, India. This was like carrying coals to Newcastle as India is probably the birthplace of meditation. As my lectures and practice sessions proceeded, with attendees using the meditative state to see their life as they would, prefer to be, I was asked, Sir, are we not storming the gates of heaven? Yes, I replied. But is it not about time we did? Nobody is advised to give up passive meditation in favor of dynamic meditation, but a mix of both works well. Here is a classic example of the creative aspect of dynamic meditation. A waiter who walked from his apartment to the restaurant where he worked daily passed a beautiful mansion surrounded by gardens. He never failed to stop and admire this dream home on his way to work and on his way back. Admiring its beauty, he would close his eyes and picture himself living there. Opening his eyes, he would continue his walk in the real world. One evening, the elderly lady he was serving in the restaurant said to him, I see you stop and admire my home daily. How would you like to live here? Nearly dropping his tray, he stammered, What do you mean? I'm too old to take care of it, so I'm retiring to Florida, she continued. I want the house to be in the hands of one who appreciates it. I think you're such a one. The waiter was soon the owner of the house he saw in his daydreams, in his dynamic meditations. Write your own ticket while in the creative state. Just going within, as you have learned to do, merely by closing your eyes, taking a few deep breaths, and visualizing passive scenes, is a therapeutic act. It helps body, mind, and spirit. But taking that extra step of visualizing or imagining a benefit to yourself or somebody else not only helps your body, mind, and spirit, it also helps another person, perhaps many other persons, and perhaps the world. If such imagined thoughts are positive and do not cause a problem for somebody else, there is every likelihood they will happen just as you imagined. To entertain such positive pictures while relaxed is to do your duty as a co-creator, a partner with the Creator. What are the limits? There are no limits, yes. You can write your own ticket by daydreaming. What has imaging got to do with your suddenly acquiring a new car? What has holding your two fingers together got to do with the solution to a desperate problem? 
What has a controlled positive daydream got to do with you are enjoying an increase in youthful energy and vitality? Nothing from what you have been taught in school or church. But from the standpoint of a new science, everything. One is the cause, the other is the effect. The imaging, the finger position, the controlled daydream are the causes. The new car, the new solution, the new vitality are the effects. The way your life unfolds for you is a cause-effect relationship. The mind is creative. The way you use it shapes your life. If this comes as news to you, it is good news and just in time. Your mind and your health have a cause-effect relationship. Do something about it. Your mind and your bank account have a cause-effect relationship. Do something about it. Your mind and the fruitfulness of your human relationships have a cause-effect relationship. Do something about it. The something in all three cases involves positive mental imaging while relaxed. Let's take a deeper look at this word positive. To think positively is to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Humans are learning to use more of their minds. It is a slow process, but none too soon if the battlefields are to be neutralized. The jails and hospitals emptied, the forest preserved and planet Earth saved. Carol took a mind training course because she was in a rut. She felt that her job was boring and her social life nil. Within two weeks of mentally seeing herself in the right job for her and with the right man, Carol had found a challenging position and was going steady with a man she eventually married. Martin took a similar mind training course. He was the local head of a manufacturing company sales staff, but competition was getting the upper hand. In the following weeks, he relaxed and daydreamed about increased sales. Concurrently, he began to develop new ways to outsell competitors. Later that year, he was elevated to a regional sales management appointment. Carol solved her own personal problem. Martin not only solved his own personal problem, but in the process solved a problem for everybody in the manufacturing company. Where do you start? Do you daydream to create a better love life for yourself or a bigger bank account? The answer lies in how I began this short course that you hold in your hand. I had you begin not by helping yourself, but by helping others. This establishes you as a co-creator. Once known to the creator as a co-creator, you become more eligible for creative support on whatever level for planet Earth or yourself. I am advising you, in order to change your life for the better, to think not only positively, but also positively. To do so is to harness the greatest power of your own mind. Besides having a visible means of support, you then acquire an invisible means of support also. Asked to describe what this means, I throw up my hands. Your invisible means of support is indescribable. It is like sitting at the right hand of God. One daydream that provides you with a winning ticket. The tale is told of a man named Smith who relaxed and spoke to the creator about his problem. My business is failing. Only winning a lottery will save me. Please cause me to be a lottery winner. Nothing happened. He was getting desperate. He tried again. My business has now failed. I am at a loss as to how to survive. Only a lottery win can solve my own financial problem. Again, nothing happened. Smith made a third attempt. Dear creator, now my wife has left me. What shall I do? Before he could end his session, a voice boomed in his head. Smith, please buy a lottery ticket. Don't make the same mistake of expecting to win the lottery without making the first step of buying the ticket. You are now being asked to buy a spiritual lottery ticket, contrary to the usual lottery ticket. Spiritual lottery tickets are sure winners. Your lottery ticket, which will place you in line to receive immense personal rewards, is to go to your relaxed state and visualize help for others first. The problem of the world that needs your help. The kinds of help that you can provide by relaxed daydreaming are endless, but you do not have to solve them all. Why not recall what has touched you the most and select one or two to devote your creative energy toward and earn your spiritual lottery ticket? Here are 10 examples to trigger your memory. Shortage of food in North Korea. People living off the Manila garbage dump. Prostitution among young girls in Thailand. Unrest in Bosnia. Ethnic conflicts. Terrorism in Ireland. Conflict in Israel. Rising crime in a big city. Corruption in local, state, or federal government. Gangs disrupting a neighborhood. Note these are specific examples of general problems. 
You might have a specific example of violence on television to use in your relaxed daydreams. Or you might wish to use a specific example of the prevalence of the AIDS virus in some activity or location. Then there are ways to help particular individuals or families. You would visualize your neighbor with a runaway son back home, or a sick relative recovered, or a high school graduate you know being admitted to an affordable college. Any problem for which you can imagine the solution is a problem that you can help to end. No matter what you choose to help the creator with, it is a valid price to pay for your lottery ticket and they are all solved by the same procedure. How to help solve any problem, no matter where it is. The procedure is one that you already are at last partly familiar with. Here it is. Read it over two or three times so that you're sure you know the steps. Exercise to solve any problem. 1. Sit in a comfortable chair, close your eyes, and take three deep breaths. 2. Visualize some peaceful scenes. 3. Deepen your relaxation by counting backward from 10 to 1. 4. Visualize or imagine the problematic situation that you have chosen to help correct, keeping the mental picture dark and dismal. 5. Visualize or imagine the situation corrected, making the mental image bathed in light. 6. Open your eyes, saying wide awake, feel good, that the solution image is on its way. Now, do it. The feeling of helping with a problem is a positive feeling. It stirs up one's motivation to work, if you can call it that, on the other problems. As you do more and more, the larger becomes your own eligibility for personal rewards. Distance is no factor. The problem can be on the other side of the world. Problem size is no factor. It can involve one individual or the entire population of a country. Time is no factor. The problem may appear to be a perpetual one, but it can disappear as quickly as the Berlin Wall came tumbling down. The amazing power of positive imaging was never publicized on front pages or cover stories, yet it has always existed. Inventors, artists, and architects are the most obvious examples of its use to create. But it goes much further than that. The chair you are sitting in would not exist if some furniture designer did not see it with the mind's eye first. Then he or she sketched it, and carpenters could construct it. The clothes you are wearing right now would not exist if some designer did not see them first. Only then could the sketches be drawn and the patterns made. The building you are in right now would not be here either, had not it been seen by the architect. Only then could it be rendered in perspective, plans and elevations drawn, bids solicited, and construction began. Entire civilizations have sprung from mental images. Greek myths about their own history evolved from the imagination. Greek art did likewise. Men like Panopolis had vivid imaging faculties that set new standards for creativity and beauty. A revolution in philosophy was pioneered by Socrates' imaginative and creative mind. It brought about a return to moral principles. Adopting Socrates' principles was not creative. Being influenced in art by Polygnitus murals was not creative. One might say that the Greek influence in the world began to wane when action preceded by imagination gave way to imitation. Imagination is tapping the creator's creativity. Maintaining contact with the creator daily is the key to leading an inspired life. How to keep in touch with your creativity. Keeping in contact with your creativity is the ultimate answer to enjoying a life boundless in love and riches. So far in these pages, we've supplied a number of ways to contact the creator. These have included doing good for others, imaging and loving your higher self, programming and using the two-finger method, imagining the world's problems being solved, imagining other individuals' problems being solved. Keeping in touch with the creator involves all of these procedures. The more relaxing and the more creative and positive visualizing a person does, the more lucky he or she will be. The person will meet the right members of the opposite sex, find the right friend to influence some needed change in a situation, get the right decision from a judge, invest in the right securities, and enjoy the fruits of what appears to be his or her own thinking, but is really emanating from a divine source. The more you're able to keep in touch with the Creator, 
the more productive your life will be of comfort, pleasure, ecstasy, and health. The fact is realized more in Asia than in America. There are thousands of temples throughout Japan, sometimes hundreds in a single city. In Thailand, practically every homeowner has a miniature shrine where daily offerings are made. In India, holy men are everywhere and even cattle are considered representatives of the Creator. In the West, in America and Europe especially, we are too busy to think of the Creator. Only when material activities slow up on weekends do people allow their thoughts to turn to the fact that there is a Creator. On Saturday the temples are used, and on Sunday the churches. Even then, the thoughts of many who attend services are more on seeing who is there and being seen, on listening to the leader's thoughts rather than to their own, on reading and singing, on sitting and rising, for many prayers are far from sincere and largely perfunctory. I'm not advocating non-attendance. I'm advocating a more meaningful attendance. You do this by being in mental touch with the Creator through all of the standard rituals. Convert the prayers, sermons, and psalms into conscious love for the Creator. If you were the Creator, wouldn't you pay more attention to worshippers who paid more attention to you? Adopting a special way to be closer to the Creator. There is no more positive thought than a thought of the Creator, and the power of positive thinking is no more dramatically rewarded. Half the world's population has an interesting and effective technique for accomplishing this. It helps to overcome the dominance of our thoughts on the activity of the moment. If you were to put this book down now and start thinking about the Creator in loving terms, you would be enhancing your connection to the realm from which divine help is assured. But there's a catch. The phone will ring, or there'll be a knock on the door, a child will cry for attention, the water will boil, or you will look at the clock and see that it is time for. What half the world's population does is get in the habit of repeating the Creator's name over and over without ceasing. All day long in India, it is Rama, Rama, Rama. In Muslim countries, it is Allah, Allah, Allah. It is practically impossible to follow suit in English-speaking countries that is the largely Judeo-Christian world. The reason is that repeating the name of God is like swearing. For God's sake, stop that. God isn't this awful. God, what a bore. God, when will this end? Even the name of Jesus Christ has become a swear word. Jesus, what a hot day. Jesus Christ, will you quit? Jesus this and Jesus that. The word Abba means father. It is used in English churches as a title of honor. However, when capitalized Abba, it is from the New Testament and means God. Mark 14.36 Try saying it aloud now. Hear how it easily it falls off the lips. This is not a requirement, but it is an asset in your spiritual connection. It helps you to stay on the line with the Creator. You can program the meaning of Abba into your mental computer, and you can program the tendency to repeat multiple times during your busy day without interfering with your activities. Here is how. Read these instructions two or three times. You may substitute the word Creator for the word God if you wish. Exercise to program Abba into your computer. 1. Sit in a comfortable chair. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths. Two, mentally repeat three times, Abba means God to me. Three, then mentally say, I want to repeat Abba many times each day and I'm going to repeat Abba many times each day. Four, add mentally, whenever I think of the name Abba. Five, I will remember it is the name of God. 6. Open your eyes, mentally saying wide awake. If you're confident that you can remember these steps, put down the book and do it. Positive or negative thinking, a continuous effort. Mental programming is evidenced by daily habits. We tend to react the same way to a repeated stimulus or event. Habits are programmed both physically and mentally. A golfer whose drive is plagued by slices is in the habit of driving the ball that imperfect way. He is programmed by grip and stance to slice. He won't stop slicing the ball until he reprograms himself to drive differently by correcting the physical stroke and practicing these corrections until the new stroke has been programmed. Then he must program himself mentally to expect to drive without a slice. An older unmarried daughter who has seen her three younger sisters marry has programmed herself toward being a spinster. Look at her, 
She is even beginning to walk and talk like one. If she wants a family life of her own, she has to change that physical programming in her walk and talk. She also has to program herself mentally to expect a man in her life. Why has the entrepreneur failed in business three times when others have prospered in those same lines? The answer, programming a poor self-image. Exactly what specific programming may be difficult to identify, but we would bet on programming in his youth that affected his self-image. Can you just hear his mother yelling at him, stupid, and his father clumsy, and his teacher wrong, and his classmates beat it? His physical programming would be along the lines of programming to change bad business habits, like to stop incurring a high overhead or stop economizing on the quality of the product or service. The entrepreneur must then program a more positive self-image by daydreaming that he is a successful tycoon or holding other mental images that show him to be a genius in his work, and so it will be. Motivational experts recommend that associating with positive people helps you to become more positive yourself. One discipline recommends that you observe the mannerisms of successful people and imitate them. I'm not opposed to this, but I am more in favor of you observing your mannerisms, your speech, your thoughts. Mannerisms include your standing posture. Is it erect? Your walking posture. Do you walk like a loser or a winner? Your facial expression. Is it glum or jovial? Change your body's standing and walking posture to that of a victor and help yourself move to the winning side. Change your thoughts from seeing the glass half empty to seeing the glass half full and life becomes fuller. Change your facial expressions to frequent smile and life becomes rosier. Put a smile on your face has been an age-old instruction for positive thinking. Recently, psychologists recognized the efficacy of this. They found that by smiling, you caused internal changes similar to what exists when you are joyous. They now recommend a smile as the antidote for being down in the mouth. When smiling changes your internal environment, it also causes changes in your exterior environment. People respond more acceptably to a smiling face than a glum face. Things go better for you. Try it today. How to get help from nature in improving your lot in life. Ancient Greeks who became creators of that impressive culture frequently received inspiration by being observant of nature. Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, was conceived as the procreator of nature's lavish beauty and life's ability to reproduce itself in the plant and animal world. Roots breaking through rock obstacles, the strength of the wind, and the irresistible force of the tides were the inspiration for their concept of Apollo. Nature's lines were adopted in their columns and other architectural motifs. The Colossus of Rhodes, inspired by tall, stately trees, was a statue of Apollo some 120 feet high set at the entrance to the Rhodes Harbor about 280 BC. Today, we are becoming more and more separated from the Creator by our separation from nature. Skyscrapers made of concrete and steel are no source of energy and life to us like groves of trees and growing grass are. The programming to activate a connection to the Creator via the right brain hemisphere can be assisted by nature. To get the most out of a walk through the park or across a lawn, attune your mind to the life force within the plants, bushes, trees, and blades of grass. Be aware of their support of you, not just by bearing your weight, but by sharing your energy with you and by proclaiming to you via sight, sound, and smell their own connection to the Creator. Besides taking a good, brisk walk through nature's world, it is also good to take there what Phyllis Diller calls a good, brisk sit. What better place to sit, close your eyes, take three deep breaths, and see your higher self bathed in white light. What better place than on a log, in a grassy green, or by a running brook, to relax for a few seconds, Take a few deep breaths and love the Creator. You will discover that love is mutual. When you contemplate nature, you temporarily absent yourself from a world of obstacles to positive thinking. Some of these obstacles are a messy house, complicated job, and a tendency to use negative words in everyday conversation. You can program a sort of mental house cleaning by being aware of these various pressures on you to think limitedly and pessimistically. How about the messy house? 
relax and daydream about cleaning the hall closet, the garage, the attic, the basement, and any other area that is other than orderly. You will find that by repeating this daydream a few times that you will not be able to tolerate those overladen shelves or unseemly piles of belongings. Gradually you will find time to clear this mess and that pile. It will not be only physical house cleaning but a mental one. Next the job. How do you keep a job from getting you down? Especially when the more you do the more there appears to do. And your supervisor blasts you for no good reason. And just when you get things down to an easier routine changes are made to disrupt it. This is as bad as a messy house in its effect on your thoughts and attitudes. It also requires mental house cleaning to combat its effects on your ability to think positively and therefore get help from the other side. Just as you relaxed and saw yourself cleaning the house place by place, you need to relax and see your job getting more orderly. Use only one daydream at a time. Perhaps the first would be to see yourself happy on the job. Next, you would daydream about having the job easily completed by closing time. Then the supervisor with a smiling face and next your own ability to change as the routine changes. As you daydream in this manner, you are enjoying a mental house cleaning from the job point of view. Persevere with desire, expectation, and belief, and these daydreams will come true. Finally, be aware of your language. Language is a habit. We do not think of every word we say before we say it any more than we think of every separate step we take before we walk. To break the habit of using self-limiting and negative words, we need once again to resort to reprogramming via relaxed imaging and positive mental affirmations. We are told that in the beginning was the word, meaning that the word was creative. It was the start of the creator's creation of the material universe. I have a sneaking suspicion that before the word, there was something else, a laugh. Be that as it may, the word is still there and it is still creating. Take the word try. We hear it so often, I will try to do it. I will try to be there. I will try to win. We will venture to say that whoever said try did not do it, did not get there, and did not win. When you say try, you are giving yourself permission to fail. It is better to say, I'll do it. I'll be there. I'll win. By using more affirmative words, the mind gets the message. It then sets its priorities accordingly. Creativity is activated. You succeed. Many people need a kick in the can'ts. By using the word can't, they are making a self-fulfilling prophecy. Say, I can't. And you really can't, even though there is of every likelihood you could have. As you can see, a giant step in mental house cleaning is reprogramming of everyday speech to be more positive. Let us now use words to reprogram our use of words. Here is how. Read these instructions several times before doing it. Exercise to reprogram our use of words. 1. Relax in a comfortable chair. Close your eyes. Take three deep breaths and visualize some peaceful scene. 2. Repeat mentally several times. I am aware of the limiting words I use. I understand they affect my life. Since I want a better life, I will now use better words. I now use words that are positive and creative. 3. Open your eyes mentally saying wide awake and using more positive words than before. Now put the book down and do it. Some of our speaking habits are so ingrained that you may still find yourself using an occasional I can't or similar self-restricting terms. The above daydreaming session should be repeated if your improvement is not complete. The mind runs our life, especially our body's life. With the Creator being our source of life, everything we do to activate our right brain's connection to the Creator becomes a step in the direction of ideal day after ideal day. And this concludes The Amazing Power of Positive Imaging by Robert B. Stone. Robert Stone has this amazing ability to take a very general topic, one in which we have literally dedicated hundreds of episodes to and bringing something new to it. And it's important to take what he taught and bring that into our own understandings. I am a strong believer that when we serve others, it is empowering to us. It's a spiritual lottery ticket. If we spend time outside of ourselves and we spend time not just imagining for ourselves, but imagining for the world by thinking positively of the world, it enables us to 
create a reality that helps us too. And it's an important step. He gives some important steps to earn your right into creating the world that you want. Sometimes this is internal. It's like you give yourself permission to do the things you want by being of service to others. Whatever reason it is, it is absolute. When you're thinking of others and working for others, your heart becomes aligned with your mind. And when your mind and heart are aligned, anything is possible. There's some great techniques here. Great affirmation to reprogram your use of words. I am aware of the limiting words I use. I understand they affect my life. Since I want a better life, I will now use better words. I now use words that are positive and creative. I plan on definitely using that when I find myself using negative words. And I invite you to do the same and share your experience over time with reprogramming your mind. He shares the Abba technique, a way of thinking about God and saying God's name for the Western world because we can't necessarily say God it doesn't have the same power. So by saying another word, by programming that word to say Abba, by saying Abba regularly, we can have that effect that other cultures do when they try to cite the name of God over and over again. You can solve any problem, no matter what it is, by using positive imaging in the ways that he talks about. You visualize or imagine the problematic situation that you've chosen to help correct, keeping the mental picture dark and dismal, and you visualize or imagine the situation corrected, making the image bathed in light. Continuing to do this, you begin to solve the problem that you most likely had created. Your mind is obviously powerful, but there are ways to control the way you think. There are techniques that you can do to empower yourself to use this positive imaging to change your life. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution. Thank you.